Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 64 of the Cloud Computing Australia show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that Alibaba Cloud has launched its China Gateway program in Australia, aiming to help companies of all sizes enter the Chinese market to grow their online and offline presence in the country. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the Australia show again this week. Yeah, it's great to be back and it's great to talk about this. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So look, an opening question then, do you see Ali Cloud having an advantage over say AWS, Microsoft and Google in Australia as far as entering the actual Chinese market now? I think the only advantage that they're really going to have is the fact that they're focusing on the market and growing the market. And so while uh, Microsoft and Google and AWS may have points of presence at certain times in, in Australia and other places, uh, the ability to, in essence, kind of uh, facilitate the uh, utilization or basically to penetrate the Chinese market is you know, something that's going to be valuable to Australia. And it looks like they have you know, online payment, logistics, digital marketing capabilities that are there. And, Reality is I think most of the uh, the world is looking to sell into China now that it's growing so fast. And I think Australia is probably on the brink of being the, you know, the country that's probably going to benefit most from that because geographically they're closer. You know, I can get to Australia a lot faster. I can get back to the U.S. from China. I, I, you can get to Australia um, from China a lot faster than you can get from Australia back to the U.S. And also the, the matter is that people are looking for someone to hold their hand and really kind of guide them through the cultural issues, the legal issues, the the digital security things, the great you know the great wa firewall that they have, you know all these things are scaring people off. And quite frankly, um, Alibaba is going to be on the ground in China, and I think organizations, their organization that's willing to help the Australian businesses take a hold of that market is going to be successful. So I think I, I think great things are going to come out of this. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with you on that. Now, look, let's give it a scenario. Say we've got a business that's in the US that's, you know, heavily involved with AWS and using Microsoft as well, for, for example, just for example. Uh, but they, they, they really need to penetrate the Chinese market and, and all these security barriers that are in their way. You know, how, how do you see that scenario playing out? I think that um, people are going to understand that if they're going to basically put a point of presence or put up a website or put up a uh, office and you know um, do any kind of number of things to basically sell into the Chinese market that they can't go there with AWS or any of the American-based cloud companies because you know they're not allowed to they're not allowed to work within China at least last time I looked with the laws things are changing though unless they go through a partner and here's somebody that's already on the ground they're a Chinese-based cloud-based company and by the way they're third overall uh, behind AWS and Microsoft. Um, so they're doing pretty good. Typically, China is going to be their market. But what they're doing is they're trying to say, we'll give you turnkey systems to, to get into the market space, to build your website, your point of presence, to build your payment systems, um, you know, to deal with security issues, to deal with the cultural issues, to deal with language issues. And I think that's what people are kind of hesitant about. You know, having stood up, you know, technology in China, um, you know, many times in my career as CTO, it was just completely, you know, utterly expensive, not because the technology was, in, was insurmountable, but the layer of people that I had to find. It, you know, you basically have to pick and choose organizations and people that are able to help you, to guide you through the cultural issues, guide you through security. And we made so many mistakes and paid so much money for those mistakes, it was very difficult to make that happen. And so what Alibaba is saying is that we're going to give you a, Chinese, a, a China gateway in Australia and it's going to basically provide one-stop shopping for anybody who needs to go into the market. We'll probably have consultants or at least people who are going to be partnered with to be consultants, the ability to you know, build these things out. And so Australians who are looking to get into the Chinese market, this may be the cheapest way for them to go, not because the cloud may be the cheapest you know, compared to the other cloud computing providers, but they're not going to make as many mistakes. They're not going to you know, run afoul of the laws and run afoul of the culture and run afoul of all the other things that can happen in the marketplace. So were I an Australian company looking to launch, say, you know, something, you know, some sort of a, of a service, um, you know, directly there, you know, say it's, uh, you know, online pharmaceuticals or things like that, and are, you know, even selling, um, 
uh, you know, some of the uh, goods and services that they're, they, they can't get in China and trying to open up that market. For example, ginseng, um, you know, uh, apple edge and gym, ginseng for some reason is like, a, is like a treasured thing as it exists in the Asian markets. And so if I'm able to sell that, I need to know how to do it. I can't just stand, stand up a website on GoDaddy or an Amazon.com and then hope that people in China find it and hope that people are gonna be able to buy and use the right payment processes and the shipping issues uh, to move them across the plane. However, I can partner with Alibaba. They're gonna show me, they're gonna show me probably for a, a pretty good price how to build the point of presence, how to sell the thing, how to sell the goods and services, how to get paid, uh, you know, how to deal with um, you know, security issues and all the things that are coming. So that's going to be the path of least resistance, and you know it's, it's beyond ginseng, but selling electronics and selling component parts and you know rare earth materials and chemicals. You know I think that um, you know China's jumping at those things because they're growing so fast right now. I spent you know a couple of weeks there, you know last year. It's just kind of amazed at what an ultra modern company, a country that it is now, and so. They have a demand for these sorts of things. People outside the country can can and uh, meet this demand, and I think Alibaba is saying, like, come on, we know how to get you there, and so let's go ahead and get it done. So, I think that's going to be a win-win for both the Australian businesses and also Alibaba. Yeah, again, 100% agree. Uh, in fact, I, th I find it quite ironic what you just said. You said about you know people trying to sell electronics into China, uh, and I said because. <laughs> I don't know how that actually happens, but uh, but yeah, no, that'd be quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting thing to see. But yeah, look, and so my next question really is that say you're say you're an organisation, a medium-sized organisation in Australia that's you know you've gone down the AWS path. It's been the all-seeing eye for your your cloud journey so far, um, and. Uh, you now need to what mirror that onto Alibaba for to to get into the the um, Chinese market. Is that what you're saying? Or I mean, is this a Chinese gateway plugin that will convert what you tell it to convert into an Alibaba environment? I mean, you know, I think it's I think it's important because SMEs really do want the Australia uh, the Australian sort of Chinese dialogue in commerce. So uh, it sounds like to me like you're going to have to mirror everything into an Alibaba environment of the proportional part of the business that you want to you know put into the Chinese market. Would I be right in assuming that? Yeah, I think I, I think partially right. I think people obviously gonna have a point of presence on something now. It's either gonna be Amazon or Microsoft or Google. And if they're moving into Alibaba, I think they're gonna be in a multi-cloud scenario. And I think while they will move some of the things over to Alibaba, and by the way, moving stuff from a, a traditional infrastructure as a service player like AWS and Microsoft to Alibaba shouldn't be that you know hard hard of a deal. But I would think this would be mostly net new stuff. And so you're still gonna remain, you know, tied to AWS for, you know, some of your core data systems, things like that. Alibaba is really going to provide you with the Chinese specific things in your market. But by the way, if you're China, you're focused, you know, 80%, 90% on the China market as the way in which you're selling your goods or services, then it probably makes sense for you to do the port from AWS and Microsoft into Alibaba and then bring that up and running. But you got to take it on a case by case basis. I think um, Australian companies are going to be multi-cloud. It's just the way it's going to go. They're going to run AWS or Alibaba. It could be AWS, Microsoft, and Alibaba. It could be AWS, Microsoft, and Google. It's just a mix of things that are going to be, um, you know, allow you to get into the market faster. And so, and I don't think they have many qualms about it. I think people who, um, you know, say we're going to do AWS, we're not, you know, going to do nothing different. If they're trying to sell international, I mean, good luck. You got to use a mix of cloud services and people who understand the security issues. And I think what they're saying here is we're just going to provide you a turnkey service to make it happen. And I think that's smart. So they're going to, by the way, capture um, businesses into their cloud, and then there may be some upsell that occurs past that. So may people say may say, well, Alibaba's you know 10, 20 percent cheaper than AWS for the same services. You know, why don't we start moving on and putting things on that cloud, even though the workloads are not specifically China related. And so I think that's really kind of the Trojan horse, you know, strategy that's coming on here. Let's help you do something that's fairly tactical and getting your business into China. And then we'll grow the business once we uh, we get it there and basically try to, um, you know, land and, you know, land and multiply. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting as well. You mentioned security, and it would be interesting to see how the dynamics of security are divided from an Alibaba cloud in China and say an AWS backend bucket or something. 
uh, and whether there's sort of a, a liability, whereas you're, you're, you're coming, your, your turnkey procedure now with the, the China Gateway is that the data that's for China is stored on Alibaba as opposed to some sort of AWS bucket, which we all know are perfectly secure uh, and no one ever has access to. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, security is always just basically goes from the requirements where you're moving from. And the, the reality is you can screw security up on any cloud platform out there. And ultimately, you have to have the capabilities of, you know, kind of assessing what the security issues are. I think that, um, you know, the Alibaba, in terms of being a China-based company, would cause some concern with people who are buying, you know, cloud services, probably for no no real reasons, um, just kind of paranoia kind of things. But the reality is you kind of assess their security with the other cloud-based securities and, you know, systems out there and make sure you're moving in the right direction. So security is never going to be one size fits all. Alibaba has identity access management encryption and all those things working. But typically it's going to be with things that exist in their cloud that exists in the country in China. So you have to kind of, you know, measure the risk of doing that if there's any risk at all, you know, with holding things on traditional US based cloud systems. I mean, there may be a reason to do it. For example, US based cloud systems are subject to subpoenas. Uh, where I think Chinese-based clouds are not, you know, since it's overseas. And so there may be a reason why you're doing that. Hopefully we're not, you know, talking to international drug runners who are like looking to put their, their systems on the cloud. But there's some reasonable sense of privacy as it exists in, you know, both countries. But there, there's privacy issues that pop up uh, in the fact that you're, you're putting stuff within China. And so the, you know, Chinese... Culture is different, the way in which they manage systems is different, the way in which we deal with security is different, all those sorts of things. So you have to kind of dig in and do your research and make sure you understand exactly what you're doing. I wouldn't jump into this both, both feed and put everything I, we own, you know, any Alibaba, Alibaba off of the AWS cloud, and we have them stored there now, but do, certainly to look at the tactical advantages of doing so and the ability to kind of save money going forward. And that's the real reason why we're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you should mention the international drug runners because last week my phone didn't stop ringing for those sort of chats when it spoke to about cloud, but this week, not, not a peep. I've not had anyone calling <laughs> me so far. But anyway, look, I digress with my bad sense of humor. Uh, well, look, let's move on nicely to your, uh, your top tips then, Dave. If you would uh, be good enough to share those, that'd be great. Sure. Number one, make sure you run the numbers. We just talked about that. I think people have a tendency to um, look at what putting things on their favorite cloud and basically force fitting your application and whatever business you're standing up on a particular cloud provider. And so how much is it going to cost you to, to, to basically build these systems that are going to be focused at the China Chinese market in AWS and Microsoft and Google and then Alibaba? It isn't even possible to do so. Um, so and how much money you're going to spend going forward. And there's going to be some additional security issues you have to deal with, some additional people you have to have around to make these things happen. So run the numbers. I don't know how many companies I've you know, uh, consulted with that have gone into the Chinese market and probably um, you know, lost um, uh, $2 for every dollar they invested just because they, and the reality was that it was their fault. The market was there. They were unable to do the things they needed to do to make, take, it, take, make, take advantage of the marketplace. Uh, watch out for security. It's going to be vastly different on on one cloud versus the other, and your security really comes up to your requirements and what you're looking for. So it's never one size fits all security. People have a tendency to kind of read Gardner reports and Forrester reports, and they see that uh, AWS and Microsoft are in the upper right hand corner when it comes to security. Well, that's kind of a general take on it. What specific security needs are going to be relevant to the cloud you're looking to provide, and specifically if you're dealing with the Chinese market, where the security is going to be very different, very tactical, very focused on the particular on a particular country, and then consider culture and government. I mean, uh, the risk here is that they may change the game on you and decide that um, um, for wh whatever reason that your point, your presence in the in the uh, in that country is no longer needed or no longer desired, and you know, off you go, and there's nothing you can do about it, and so. Uh, you have to, you know, weigh those risks because culturally it could shift, and therefore your products persona non grata, or the government could could uh, put the kibosh on your ability to sell these things across the border. And you have to really kind of make sure, understand that it is going to be a risk, but those things have to be considered. And I think that the tough question would be, what happens if the government intervenes and pushes you out, and what are you going to be able, what, what do you need to do? Yeah, great top tips there. Some really thought-provoking questions, uh, and I'm sure 
yeah, it's going to be some insightful things moving forward with companies that can now ask themselves better questions about the market share and where their risks are and uh, where their ROI can be hugely impacted by this gateway. So, it's, uh, yeah, great top tips there, Dave. Look, thanks for being part of another Australia show this week and taking time out of your uh, busy schedule. I really appreciate that. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you're always invited, you know that. Uh, but that's no, great. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. We've got another two shows coming up, as you probably all know, the C-Suite show and the training show. So watch out for those ones coming up soon. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at Dave Linthicum. Sorry, at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We've got lots of blogs to read as well, so click the links below. Check those out. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and, and colleagues. We really appreciate all your support online as well. So thanks for watching and until next week.